Okay, hello and welcome back to the Land Rover Toolbox videos. This is continuing on the LT230T. Right, something that you should notice when you're checking gears over is for things like damage. This has had damage from broken half shaft and some of the shrapnel that came out of it. You can see that quite clearly. For longevity, this gear would be discarded. Okay, well this isn't actually a dog clutch, this is a high-low selector sleeve and a hub. What you can see on the hub here, we've actually had some wear. I'll show you why this is later. Also on the teeth, you'll see that there will actually be a driven side on this uh, sun gear. You can see where the teeth has actually uh, worn slightly, but it doesn't seem to be too much of an issue. Okay, well, I'll show you this uh, sun gear. In comparison to our Land Rover one, this is out of a DAF uh, rear diff. Quite a difference in size. However, the design you can see is exactly the same. Okay, so carrying on with the uh, differential carrier, this is the front half where you should be checking for any damage internally and any wear surfaces so it's not excessively worn. This one isn't. And on the other half of the diff carrier, these areas here are where the gears and the gear bushing runs on. And this will be very important to check to see what sort of wear we have. Anything excessive will render this part unserviceable. This area here supports the bush and the high gear. And the stepped area here is for the low gear, which runs on there without a bushing. Okay, so the bushing for the high gear, you can see a shiny areas on it. These are where the gear has had a, a thrust and it's worn in that certain area. Right, so I'm checking the bush on the shaft or the diff carrier to see how much play I have, which there is a little bit. I would have thought that was fairly acceptable. Now, looking at the bush itself, you can see that it's worn more in one area and the bias is towards the front of the bush than it is on the rear. And running my finger in the inside, there is actually a step there. So the bush is worn a little bit. So we'll have a look at the uh, microfish here, number four, which is uh, this one, FRC7441. It tells me, note one, use IEEE100050. This is the importance of using uh, something like a microfish and checking your part numbers because parts do get up or superseded or upgraded or changed right so anyway we're on the paddock site iee of 1050 okay we never say 1000 we we count the zeros so yeah basically we have the bush seven pound 48 now i'm looking at checking a new bush against the shaft to see how much play i can remove without buying any expensive gears first okay so the low gear this runs directly on the diff carrier shaft, okay? Now, if there is excessive play in here, it means that the gear and the shaft or the diff carrier has to be changed as two complete items. There's no way of getting out of it. Right, so basically, I'm looking at the high gear, and what I'm looking for, because it's biased towards the front, I'm seeing if the teeth are chiseled, okay, which is... This area here is where the wear is, which is fine. It doesn't tell me that the gear is slanting too much at all. You can see where it's worn, okay? And as I said with the bush, it was biased towards the front of the gear. But by the looks of it, it hasn't affected at all, so the wear isn't excessive. This also on the front of the gear here is a wear area. So having a Sherlock Holmes type mind, we're deducing what's happened to the life of this gear this gearbox or this transfer box you see in here the shiny part is where the wear area is which is more towards the front than the rear right so looking at the dog teeth we'll be inspecting to see what sort of damage we have here now if it's been crunched it will have teeth that are badly damaged now this is only where it's been locked into place and it's basically spent most of its life there how can I tell that? Well, if I look at the uh, selector hub, all right, this is the selector hub here. I've marked it to make sure it goes back in the right place. On this side here, you can see where the pressure has been constantly for the drive. So it's been in high gear most of its life. 
If we look at the other side for the low selection, there's no damage or wear whatsoever. So we know that the owner of this vehicle or owners have probably never been in a low range. Okay, so here's a trick is to check the dog teeth and the selector hub by using the unworn side and then wiggling it to see how much play is there. This on this one is not excessive at all. You can see the movement. Okay, so that's just a tip is use the unworn sides of components to check where there is where. Okay, so checking the high low selector sleeve and the inner hub basically for movement in and out so it doesn't snag and also to see what sort of damage there is. Okay, this is in fairly good condition. Checking the uh, selector yoke with this to see how much movement there is and that is fine that's okay so we can put that back we've got another measurement on that in a little while okay so what we have is the sun gears with uh, thrust washers underneath now these are quite small gears and they do take a fair bit of battering during their life basically we'll be looking at the teeth there to see if they've been turned into a uh, wedges or not uh, basically, these are start. These have had a fair bit of wear, okay, on both sides of the teeth. If it has a burr on the teeth, then you know the gears are well and truly foobard. On this one here, I'd say, just looking at the shaft on our planetary gears, these are actually quite worn. You can see the teeth themselves are worn, but also the shaft as well. It's actually got a little bit of a step in it. Now, if it's worn on the shaft, you can see the shiny bit there, then it'll be worn on the inside of the gear as well. I think we'll need to change these ones before we go ahead and put our HD cross pin in. Basically, with a workshop manual, it leaves you quite wanting for um, showing you where the wear is. However, there are measurements here, um, number 56 and 59, which you use and check with the feeler gauge. It should be with the bearings fitted. However, as a quick check, while we've got the components apart, we can still measure them. So basically, we'll just quickly assemble the low gear onto the shaft, I'll just a quick check to see what sort of play there is. Then we have our selector hub here. It doesn't matter which way this goes on, first of all. It does slip onto the splines. When it's um, clamped together with the bearing, it is fixed quite well. Okay, so basically we'll drop just the hub into place and then what we'll do is put the bush and the high gear into place. Right, so with a set of feeler gauges, Maximum wear limit is 0.15 of a mil. If I can fit it between here, then it's worn up too much. And the same here. Well, basically, it's more here because the gears actually drop down. Okay, so they're all right. The gap isn't as large as the maximum amount of clearance allowed, so we are fine there. Clearance is between 0.05 to 0.15 of a millimetre. If it's out of clearance, then you'll need to be changing the high-low selector hub. Okay, dropping onto the Ashcroft Transmission homepage, we're looking for DIY rebuild kits. Okay, so in the sidebar, LT230 rebuild kits. Well, if we click on here, we'll find the list. So, LT230 rebuild kits. Now, we have an LT230 Master Rebuild Kit, which we have bought for this gearbox. And then just browsing down, there are some nice goodies. Um, bearing sets, etc, etc, etc. A pair of input gears, input gear. Um, HD cross pin, which we bought as well. And the uh, intermediate shaft. A sump. And then we're looking for the LT230T a shim kit. Alright, so we've got the HD pin. We've got a shim kit which we'll need for setting preloads on the bearings later. So basically, just a quick explanation, this is about £32, which gives you a selection of eight shims, 0.05mm to 1.9mm. So basically, with a master rebuild kit, you get all the basic stuff in a bag with gaskets and a big pile of bearings. For you guys who knew about our tent that collapsed in the backyard, we've been working on getting the roof fixed up here. 
and progress is slow because of the weather however it's slowly coming together and our studios are getting a bit packed out because we're trying to fit a whole Land Rover in there well, we also got ourselves a uh, banger for £80 which didn't last long because the release bearing on the clutch collapsed and some of the fingers broke off the diaphragm but other than broken tools life goes on 